Dear students, welcome to video lecture notes on complex analysis. Today we will see Cauchy Gorsa theorem for multiply connected domains. We know that simply connected domain is nothing but a domain in which there is no hole or cap. If you want to squeeze the full contour, then you can squeeze that contour into a single point. And if it is not possible, then we can say that we are dealing with multiply connected domains. So if you consider one multiply connected domain, then it consists of few parts. So in the statement, it is written here that suppose we consider C1, C2 up to Cn, all are simple closed curves with positive orientation. That is the first requirement. The second requirement is they must lie in the original contour C and they are not sharing a common region to each other. That means if you consider arbitrarily any two point, I mean any two cows, and if you consider intersection, then it must be an empty set. If F is analytic on each these contours, each of these contours, and further, if it is analytic interior to the cow C, but exterior to these all cows Ci, then you can always find the contour integral f of z tz in this way where you are having this expression so you can see here sigma k is equal to 1 to an integration over ck fz dz what it suggests basically you are dealing with multiply connected domain and suppose that domain consists of few simple closed contours then you need to work out this integral over each of these contours and then simply summing up all these integrals will lead to the final answer for example if you consider this problem then you can see here integration over c dz upon z square plus 1 where c is the circle mod z equal to 4. How about we we'll start with? First of all, let's try to draw the curve of this circle mod z equal to 4. That will be our step number 1. Next is you can focus on the singularities of this function. This function is nothing but z square plus 1. So if you consider the zeros of this function, then they are the singularities of this function, inverse function. 1 upon z square plus 1. So we can observe that z square plus 1 can be decomposed into two parts z minus i and z plus i. And one more thing here that 1 upon z square plus 1 want to be analytic at these two points. So these are the singularities that I have located here. Now focus on this figure first. You can see here that I have considered center origin and radius 4 and this is the contour which was given in the statement. These two points, this i and minus i, these are two singularities from the statement. Now you can consider these two singularities and hence if you consider C1 which basically governs like this, it has the center point as i. And for C2, if you consider center point as minus i, these two are singularities. Then, by keeping in mind cauchy gorsa theorem for multiply connected domain, which suggests that you can consider any random circle here, but only the condition is that C1 and C2 must be disjoint. And hence, we have that liberty. So I have simply considered here the circle with center at i and radius half. You can consider any radius only provided that you must have intersection empty set or intersection of these two curves c1 and c2 so i kept into mind that thing and focus on one upon z square plus one that was our integrand which can be splitted into two parts one upon two i into one upon z minus i minus one upon two i into one upon z plus i and therefore our integral can be written like this you can see here 1 upon 2i integration over c 1 upon z minus i minus 1 upon z plus i dz. Now as I have uh, shown you earlier c1 and c2 are two curves with these specifications mod of z minus i is equal to half for c1 and mod of z plus i is equal to half for c2. Therefore from Cauchy-Gorsa theorem it's just 
a simple part that you have to focus on two different integrals integration over c1 and integration over c2 and if you add these two you will get the final result which was asked okay now come back to here on the first expression 1 upon z minus i minus 1 upon z plus i you can see you can recall the structure of c1 basically c1 was it was nothing but a simple close contour with center at i and radius half so if you recall two things one was Cauchy's theorem and another was that result famous result integration over c dz upon z minus z 0 raised to n which is equal to 2 pi i when n is equal to 1 otherwise 0. So here if you recall these two results this result and Cauchy Gorsa theorem what we will have integration over c1 is dz upon z minus i is equal to 2 pi i according to this result you can see here and integration over c2 dz upon z plus i is equal to 2 pi i this was for c2 z plus i can be written as z minus minus i so minus i was nothing but a center part of i mean center of this c2 so if you recall c1 and c2 let me show you again that figure c2 which has the center as minus i and c1 which has the center as i so with these two things in your mind if you see then you will have 2 pi i for c1 when you consider i as the center and dz upon z plus i that means minus i as the center according to this result you will have 2 pi i okay what about next two parts remaining two parts are 1 upon z plus i over c1 if you see then it is nothing but 0 according to Cauchy's theorem again let, let us recall here these are four terms we need to work with the for, for the first term we obtain the value as 2 pi i whereas for the second term we will have the value 0 why it is 0 because minus i is not a part of c1 and therefore if you consider this as f of z then it is analytic over c1 and similarly for this part if you see i is outside c2 and therefore 1 upon z minus i rather to say dz upon z minus i is nothing but an analytic function over c2 therefore for the second term and for this third term if you see then you can directly apply Cauchy's theorem and you will have 0 as your output therefore for first term you will have the answer as 2 pi i for the fourth term you will have answer as 2 pi i so if you add up these two terms you will have pi minus pi and therefore the answer will be 0 in this case as you can see here